Hi, I'm Phil from the Buzz Business Network and this video I'm going to be putting together to you, for you today is six business ideas to start. I tried to come up with six ideas that would be easy to start, wouldn't require much capital and you could do most of them from your comfort of your own home. These aren't going to be, you know, fill out with surveys or pay, click links and get paid, or those things that pay you sort of 5p per piece and because in my view that's not a business that's just employment online and a lot of them don't pay that well either so it's like less than minimum wage if you're in the UK and you or you do loads and loads so yeah I'm not going to cover them but these ideas are there's a lot of other ideas but they might just get you thinking along the lines of what you can do if you want to start a business so they're going to be quite basic for people that are just starting in business so we, we go on to the first one which is blogging. Blogging is accessible to anybody. All you need is an internet cafe or internet at home or your own computer you, and you can set up a blog. You can do free ones on Blogger, you could do a free one on WordPress. If you have a little bit of money you could self-host it but I'd probably suggest going on blogger.com and then you can point your own domain so you could buy a domain for like ten dollars or ten pounds every two years and point that to your blogger.com and then you can blog about anything. I'd suggest you would probably want to blog about something that you're interested in because it would make it more enjoyable and you'd be able to do a lot of the content yourself. You can do something, you know, you could do a blog about something you don't understand or a subject you don't understand and just outsource content on like Freelance or Elance or Odesk or one of those sites where you can get people to write content for you and then you just put 100% of your efforts into the marketing. Uh, blogging basically falls into two sides, you've got the publishing side and you've got the marketing side and the beauty of this model is if you set up your blog correctly which means you have your blog with your content but you also have an opt-in so you're collecting emails or you know Twitter fo followers or Facebook likes or some way to build up a subscriber base then every post you publish and every little piece of marketing you do adds into that funnel which builds up your subscriber base. I'm not saying these are easy ideas, blogging is a very difficult thing to get started but if you really want it and you're going to put the time in, you can definitely achieve it. All you need to do is work the floor, you know, hustle, put your blog out there on all these platforms, interact with people, comment on other people's blogs, share it about and you could start up a successful blog and then you can sell products on that blog or you could do advertising or you could do premium content or you could uh, put on the bolt on a membership site so there's a lot of ways you can monetize a blog once you have one but the you know if you are thinking about this idea just jump in start your blog start publishing content and then let it evolve from there the next one is the basis of business it's the basic element buying and selling and this you know if it's it's best if you know about a product or something so if you have a you know strong interest in watches you can shop around look at charity shops go to some antique shops find watches that you know you could make a markup and make a profit on and then resell them and it's not just watches anything you know and any any product you can think of you can go in and start buying and selling but you should really develop or have a understanding already of the product because you're going to need to be able to buy it at a price where you can sell to make a markup but this is a, a business you can start from home uh, especially with in, if you have an internet or you can get to a cafe you can get onto eBay buy products for cheap relist them I know there's one guy I can't remember his name at the moment but he he basically gets products that are listed badly on eBay relist them get them more exposure the bids drive right up and he profits on all the items he resells so that, that's an idea right there but buying and selling is is the basis of business so if you couldn't do buying and selling you could do pretty much any business because it's built upon this but this is just the bare bones uh, the next one is a removals company if you have a license I know there's some barriers to entry here because you need a license and you need access to a van or your own van or the ability to rent a van but removals people are always moving stuff Every, products and furniture and stuff is always moving about and there's always a need for companies and because 
the bigger companies have their set margins that they have to achieve, there's always the o opportunity to go in, undercut slightly, but still make a he healthy pro uh, profit for your business. So this is definitely one you can start from scratch. I put this in because I'm more of a technical person when it comes to business. I like to do stuff with internet, computers, things that can be automated. But I know there's a lot of people that like the tra traditional business and they like to get their hands dirty and do the actual hands-on stuff. So removals company is a good idea for those guys to get started with. And um, with removals, you can do you know house clearances, you can find products, and then you can link that into buying and selling because you might be given a load of stuff that they just want getting rid of. Dump a lot of it, but if you can find any valuable items, you can add up a lot of profit on top of that. The next one is training consultancy. So you basically need to have a, a skill in a certain area that people would want to pay to be taught or want to pay to be consulted on. So if you're really good at programming, you could go into training or consulting on programming. If you're a good graphic designer, if, you should have some skills. You know, you've been interested in something, you've had a passion about it, you've learned about it, then you can apply that and sell that as a product and make a successful business out of it. And the best thing about doing training consultancy over freelance is that if you do training and consultancy, you can start outsourcing the work that you're bringing in to other people so it becomes a scalable business. When you do freelancing, you're more likely to get stuck in just your time. So once you've got that limited amount of time, and that's full, it puts a ceiling on the amount you can earn. If you treat it like an agency that consults and trains, then you can start outsourcing that and then you can scale as big as as big as you like, you know, there's not not a ceiling that's stopping you and you, you're not going to hit that maximum point. The next one is craft business. I put this in for the more hands-on people, I know removals is more male dominated and craft is more female dominated, I don't think that's sexist, it's just the way it is, but if you're good at producing something, whether it be cards or, you know, clothing, anything, you could put that out and you could also link this onto the internet so you could start listing these products on eBay and other places and the beauty with this is once you have a prototype or a model done you can always outsource the production elsewhere for cheaper if you put it overseas or something so this can also scale when people normally think of a craft business they think oh you're just doing it in your house so there's no scalability you can only produce five cards a day or you know one woolly hat a day or however many that's your time maxed out but if you look at it as a business then you start thinking oh well I could outsource this and just put the blueprint together and get it done for you know a few pence on the unit and then I could make bigger margins and also scale it up to meet the demand but you can start small in your house and see if there is a demand first so that's why this is a good idea and a dropshipping business this is ideal to start because you don't handle any stock. You're basically a wholesaler for a bigger company. So you have your suppliers and they supply you at a wholesale price and then you can sell on with your markup to the public. You can do that through the internet or you can do it in a brick and mortar store or you can do it door to door. Whatever way you feel more comfortable with, you can just go out and sell their products and take your profit. <clears throat> You can do a search on Google to find dropshippers that will give you products at a wholesale price. And then once you once you found a product you're interested in, it's, it's best to do something. You, you Obviously, you can pick any products you want. But if it's something you're interested in, then you're going to have a passion for it. And that's going to come across when you try selling it. And if you have a passion and it comes across when you try selling the product, people are more likely to convert and buy. If you go in and try selling a product that the customer knows more th about than you, you're just going to look foolish and you're not going to really make that sale. You, well, you might if you're really good at sales, but if, it normally in that case, you wouldn't buy if you was the customer. So a dropshipping business is a great one to start. No cost to start up really, except for you know hitting the pavement or having a website or going door to door. Also, you, yeah, for brick and mortar, there's going to be a cost, but you wouldn't do that to start with. You want to test the waters from home first. And then if you get a product that does well, then you can start looking at renting the premises. But then jump straight in the deep end. I've seen so many people fail, not just at this business, but a lot of businesses where they've gone all, all guns blazing, and maxed out their overheads, and then got stuck in a position where their profit wasn't able to cover their 
overheads. So make sure you start small and scale slowly. So that's all the business ideas on this one. I hope it's given you some some you know ideas to kind of go away with and maybe start. I'd love to hear like if you have started any of them or put anything together in the comments. There's a link in the description as well. I have a complimentary ebook. It's got 101 ideas. So if this is you know if you want to still go through some more ideas just to get your brain kind of mechanically processing these to get some imagination going then click the link in description and download your complimentary ebook and there's 101 ideas so there's loads to go through go through them all and then you can maybe tweak one or take one straight from there and get started uh, until next time all right yeah please like and subscribe uh, subscribe if you like this video that always helps promote it to other people that find it useful and get your ebook from below and I'll see you on the next video